Once again, let us pray. Father, we thank you for thy grace to us. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that you have given to us. Uh, the life that we have now is given by you. You are the source of life. Jesus, as you are the resurrection and the life, and whoever comes to you, whoever believes in you, do he die, yet he shall live. Thank you for all the items that, that we have studied, Jesus, that this is your claim to be equal with the Father in essence. Thank you for the assurance of our faith that you yourself, when you are here in this world, assures your disciples, the believers, if we believe, if we abide, we will put our trust in you wholeheartedly, fully knowing that we are sinners worthy to be punished. We will never hunger. We will never thirst. We will not walk in darkness but have the light of life. Thank you that the most assured life is in, is, is in you, Jesus. The most secured. Thank you, Lord. Minister us through your Holy Spirit and through your words. And this is we we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so nagtapos tayo ng mga ilang uh, I am's ni Jesus as sa karagdagan nating kaalaman na there are 23 times we find the Lord's meaningful I am in the Bible. I am meaning ego, imi in Greek. So 24 times in the book of John or the Gospel of John. So but we are looking at the seven important or tremendous metaphors that Jesus expressed of his saving relationship toward the world. So mayroong pitong importanteng in-express ng Panginoong Isos sa kanyang pagliligtas sa mundo o sa mga mananampalataya sa kanya o sa kanyang mga tao. So the 24, uh, 23 times we can read that in 426, 620, 635, 41, 48, 51 so kung kaya nyo sundan uh, chapter 8 verse 12 8.24, 8.28 8.58 at sa so chapter 10 verse 7 verse 9, verse 11, verse 14 and then sa so chapter 11 verse 25 chapter 13 verse 19 chapter 14 verse 6 15 verse 1 15 verse 5, 18 verse 5, 18 verse 6, and 18 verse 8. So, we have discussed just 635, 812, 10.17 last week, as well as 10.11. So, now we will be looking at chapter 14, uh, 11 verse 25. 14 verse 6 as well as 15 verse 1 so we'll try to uh, make it as simple as possible but we would like to ask your attention <coughs> so attention po ang kailangan so mahalaga po ito sa atin we praise the Lord Jesus by revealing Himself as deity or divine. He revealed Himself equal with the Father in essence as God. So this is vital in our understanding about the gospel. So I'll repeat, important ito sa ating kaunawaan tungkol sa mabuting balita. Jesus is the very central of the gospel. 
He is the gospel of God. The centrality of the gospel. Jesus. You remove Jesus, no gospel at all. So as we start studying this I am, we start in chapter 6 verse 35. Alala nyo pa yon? So I encourage you to memorize the I am of Jesus. Uh, next week, uh, we will have some quiz. Anyone who can give their memory verse and he can memorize the seven I am of Jesus perfectly and we will give you reward. So not because you are just a saint, but because you memorize the one, uh, the words of the one who saves you. Okay? It sounds good? Okay lang ba? Naintindan ba? O isayahin ko na lang? <laughs> uh, bibigyan natin ng reward ang makapag-reward. Just word memorizing the I am of Jesus. So just to wrap up, in last last week, first week, we study about 635. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. This is the good news for us who are always hunger and thirst. Diba? Ito ay magandang balita sa atin na laging nagugutom at nauuhaw. We need to come and believe that we will never thirst or we will never hunger and thirst. So sa atin na mga laging uhaw, gutom, mabuting balita ito. Ang kailangan lang natin ay Lumapit kay Isos at manampalataya sa Kanya upang hindi na tayo magutom at hindi na tayo mauuhaw. Mabuti, yun yung ating application. John chapter 8 verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Again, this is the good news for us. Who walk in this dark world. The world is so dark. Is so dim. We could not see where to go. We are confused. But praise the Lord Jesus. He said. If you follow me. You will not walk in the darkness. And you have. The light of life. We are crying. Because sometimes there is no. Light in our country, the, soup, the miracle, we are blaming miracle. But praise the Lord, Jesus is the light of our life. Jesus shine in us that when we follow Him, we will not walk in darkness. And He is our light of life. That is worth memorizing. That is the second I am of Jesus. Last week, Still ringing in your ears about John chapter 10, verse 7. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus emphasizes that He is the door, the only door. Those who believe in Jesus, they are the sheep of Him. We are saved, secure, and a fine pasture in Him. We can go on Him and find pasture. If we are in Christ, He is the door. And it was followed up in John chapter 10 verse 14. Jesus also said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own knows me or know me. Ako ang mabuting Pastol, kilala ko ang akin at ang aking mga tao o ang aking mga tupa. O kilala ko ang aking mga tupa at ang mga tupa ay kilala ko. Wow! He knows his sheep and his sheep knows him. There is a personal relationship established by his love and give himself willingly that this ship will never lost. 
I just repeat that. He knows his sheep and his sheep knows, knows him. There is a personal relationship established his, uh, by his love and give himself willingly that his sheep will never lost. What a good shepherd you have. Take note. Jesus lovingly give his life for the sheep and willingly receive the punishment instead for the sinner sheep. Think about that. Ang Panginoong Isos ay ma mahal na mahal niyang tinanggap ang mga tupa at tinanggap ang yung tawag sa Tagalog ano yung willingly? Ha? Hindi lang pusa eh, yung nagagalak o may kagalakan or willingly yung handa niyang pagbayaran ang kasalanan ng kanyang mga tupa a bukal sa kalooban niyang tinanggap na pagbayaran ang punishment ng kanyang tupa that is how Jesus a good shepherd, he gave his life we can see or we can think that is amazing love no one lays down his life for his friend or his sheep think about it carefully deeply and think about yourself what will happen to you if you don't believe in Jesus the great I am right? pag-isipan natin ang ginawa ni Jesus at pag-isipan natin kung ayaw, ta ayaw natin manampalataya kay Jesus ano ang mangyayari sa atin I hope you get the message and I pray today we will continue we'll just uh, make it quick as much as possible quick huh? <laughs> quick and precise now we will go to John chapter 11 verse 25 John 11 25 Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life whoever believes in me do he die Ye shall live. <clears throat> what an assuring words from Jesus. I understand these words because I am nearly to be to meet Mr. Death. Muntik na ako mamatay. At sa iyo at sa gusto nyo, you like it or not, sooner or later, every one of us, we will meet Mr. Death. Maraming natatakot, napon the world, wag naman sana, kahit sampung na, or one million na pa yan. Sasabihin lang sa iyo ni Mr. Death, who's there? Come in. <laughs> I just remember when I was second year high school, I was very sick, having a fever. They call it typos, typhoid something, typhoid fever. It is almost a month. There are times I'm running. It seems something terribly wrong with me. My mother who just her birthday yesterday was very disturbed but keep on praying and giving some medicine praying and medicine and tonight why you are just why you are praying and why you are giving me medicine because the Lord reminds me when I pray I need to give you medicine that is sound teaching not just like keep on praying and do nothing to the point that I know 
any time I can be dead. I remember those those days. Sabi ko ano kaya nangyari sa akin para kung inahabul ng malalaking bato na dinaganan na ako. I was being pursued by big stones. And if I feel something, I just something. There is terribly something wrong with me. And I started believing that I am going to be dead. This is the verse repeatedly rings in my head. And I am convicted in my heart that I have nothing to boast but to be dead. But this verse also gives me hope. Whoever believes in me, Jesus assures those who will die or dying. In some other way, it gives me assurance that I am going there. Realizing that any time of the day, this conviction this this convicts me to believe in the Lord Jesus. I said deep in my heart, Lord, I know I will be dead sooner or later. I accept it. But as you promised, even I die, I will live. So that is started with this beautiful promise of Jesus 2,000 years ago. Now when we look in verse 26, Jesus asked Martha. You read that? And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. He directed the question to Martha and said, Do you believe this? I need just to go back to my story. I started realizing that by sooner or later I will, I will be dead. Ilang sandali na lang, pwede na akong mamatay. At wala akong pwedeng pangawakan para muli or patuloy pang mabuhay. But Jesus the same asked this question to me. Everyone who lives and believes Jesus is saying to Martha and to the people who hear him, everyone of you who believe or who lives, everyone will be dead. But he said, Do you believe that I am the, sur the, sur the resurrection and the life? Do you die yet? You shall leave. Je Jesus pointing the question to Martha with some other in that very moment. On my case, I said, Lord, whatever happened, I trust in your promise. Honestly, I have no fear in death. But sometimes my fear is in the process of dying. That's why sometimes when I ride or when I am in the Etihad, there is some <laughs> surge or turbulence because I like to watch documentary. I need to face my fears. Some airplane was just suddenly disappeared and some malfunction. Sometimes a pilot error. Lord, I hope it will be sudden, quick, dead. But we, but everyone, this is the truth. But there is the absolute truth Jesus is seeing. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, do you believe? This is the question it's not only that Lazarus will come to live, but to her, this question is for us 
as we are still alive and going to die sooner or later. We need to be ready. Kailangan po nating harapin ang katotohanan ito. Minsan para bang masyado naman yata nagkamali ako sa aking pinasukang church. Pero alam niyo ba na ito ang most graceful, most kind, most loving that someone is telling you the truth that we are going everyone. And there is a hope of that. And the hope is not of this church. The hope is comes from the very mouth of Jesus. Do you die? Yet you shall live. Wow. That is the good news. We know that no one, only Adam, has lived 920 years. Mitusila is more than 920. The rest started at 120. And now, most of the Filipinos die early. So meaning, everyone is going to meet Mr. Deep Death. Now we need to look how Martha understands Jesus. Paano niya ba naiintindihan si Jesus? We Christians, sometimes we believe something, but when we, it is in the process of verifying, actually we don't know what we are believing. So yun yung problema. We have a neighbor in, in our province that his son was died recently due to motorbike accident. And everyone flows for condolence, condolence, blah, 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 and so many things. And I give some words, and it is my uh, shock because I believe they are Christians, but he said, No, we will meet them in the resurrection day. They believe that when a Christian will die today, it's just sleeping somewhere around, and later on it will be resurrected. No. The Bible is clear about that when a Christian died immediately, he is in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will discuss that later. Now verse 15, uh, 17, look at what happened to Martha. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus has already been in Tom four days. Bethany was near to Jerusalem about two miles off. So Jesus was in Bethany. So he he had the news that Lazarus' friend is dead. How many how many hours? So four days. So don't calculate. It's hard to calculate. We have no calculator. So four days already. That means according to their custom, that is already sure dead for this night. Nangangamoy na. There is a routine is started when it is for this already. Jesus did not in hurry to go there. I think the Bible is clear. This is to glorify God. He did not come immediately because when it is two days, three days, and Lazaro Naging nabuhay si Lazaro. Ah, wala drama lang 'yan. That is just a drama. But for this really it is dead. But verse 19, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So there is a great agony because Lazaro is dead. And most probably Lazaro is the breadwinner. And they are a little bit wealthy family. Why we can assume that one? Because Martha or Mary, he has uh, an air the perfume. That is the cost of one year salary. At binigay niya, sinira niya sa paanan ni Jesus. 
and they are getting a lot of people in their house so they are little bit wealthy now verse 20 in the same chapter so when Martha heard that Jesus was coming she went and met him but Mary remained seated in the house so Martha he goes to Bethany uh, Mary is just still <coughs> mourning back home Martha said to Jesus Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died so here we go Martha he believes that when Jesus is there this death could not overpower Lazaro he has a good belief system but how good how far good is that belief system we need to check because the same with us we believe that Jesus is Lord we believe that Jesus is God we really don't trust him 100% we are like Martha he said Lord if you are here he believes that Jesus can stop the death of Lazarus Jesus has the power over Lazarus or the death and he start believing that yes Jesus can resurrect Lazaro verse 22 but even now he supplemented his her argument but even now I know that whenever you ask from God God will give you even Lazaro now is four days when you ask the father it will be given to you Jesus said to her your brother will rise again so Jesus is pointing that he will be after an hour he will be resurrected after ilang oras lang siya ay muling mabubuhay pero ang kaunawaan ni Martha Martha understand differently he has a good sound theology but little bit something wrong in application Martha said to him I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day so he is referring in the last day all that Jesus, that the believer of Jesus will resurrect. You need just to go back in chapter 6. This is the famous teaching of, of the Old Testament. And even in chapter 6, Jesus said about this. 6 verse 37, he said, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. Verse 38, For I have come down from heaven to at heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Verse 39, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up, on the last day so Jesus is repairing when he will come back the second coming of Christ so Martha is saying he is supplementing sabi niya muli po siya mabubuhay Jesus again continues said he will rise then Jesus said to Martha I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, do he die, yet shall he live. And again he asks, And everyone who lives and believes in me never die. Do you believe this? So Jesus is saying, Whoever lives and believes in him, they will not enter into spiritual death. Hindi na sila muling mamamatay spiritually. Now, I just want to keep on repeating this. We read the Bible saying, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And everyone jumping that saying, saying Oh, Jesus is not God. Because he is asking why the Father abandoned him. That's not the context. 
I want you to understand that Jesus was abandoned by the Father because that moment He is bearing all the sins of the world. Father saying, let it be. You die of the sins of the world once and it will never happen again. That's why Jesus said, why you have forsaken me? And that is the very moment that the Father and Son from eternity past separated because of the sins of the world and because of my sin. But Jesus willingly saying, so be it. And that very moment will never happen again. God the Father and God the Son, they will never separate at, a, at any entire moment of the of eternity and that is once only because there is a serious business of sin and that's the good news for us who believe in Jesus we will never suffer death who believes in Christ yes we will suffer sickness we will suffer sick, uh, uh, physical death. But Jesus assures him, whoever believes in me, the word is, shall never die. There is no possibility of dying. That is a tremendous assurance when Jesus is saying to Martha, to Mary, to us, you will die. But if you will believe in me, you will never. Wow. In this world that it seems life is so easy to kill, we have hope in Christ. Think about that. That is... <coughs> The very good news we can have in Christ. So after some times, Mr. or Martha, verse 27, she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Who he, he, uh, Martha start back up in his belief system. When she said, when she said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is schooling you. And when, he, uh, when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not kept coming to the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. So still in Bethany. So Martha think that uh, Jesus is entering in their place. 31, when the Jews were with her in the house consoling her, so Mary rise quickly and go out and followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now Mary, now when Mary come to where Jesus was and was uh, and saw him, she fell at his feet seeing him, Lord. Now this is Mary. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. So still they believe that Jesus can stop the dead. They believe that Jesus is the great I am. They believe that Jesus is Lord. Adonai, the supreme one. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. Why Jesus was troubled? When he see these people weeping, mourning, he's troubled because they are weeping? Nabagabag ba si Jesus sapagkat nakita niya na mga tao ay umiiyak sa pagkamatay ni Lazaro? Nakikiiyak sa kamatayan ni Lazaro? Sa palagay ninyo. Just we will continue. Then, 
verse uh, 33 when Jesus saw uh, verse 34 and he said where you have laid him they said to him Lord come and see so when Jesus was greatly troubled he is asking where is Lazarus where you have buried Lazarus and then verse 35 Jesus wept it seems there is we need to correct our attention in this passage so Jesus wept because Mary, Martha and the Jews wept no he knows that he will rise up Lazaro Jesus is troubled of what Jesus is troubled the sting of death Uh, the sting of sin is death. He saw how sin will kill. And he is greatly troubled. How powerful is sin. And it is he only can overpower that sin. <coughs> he wept. Not for the sake of weeping. We need to understand. That life is so precious. He comes on this world <coughs> not just to take for granted the life. He gave this life for our life. Umiyak si Isos sa pagkat nakita niya ang kapangyarihan ng kasalanan ng kamatayan. At yun ang ating kailangan. At yun ang binibigay ni Kristo sa atin. We praise the Lord. Verse. Jesus weep because the power of sin is death. 36. He loved Lazarus. Lazarus is his sheep, his people. He come for Lazarus to give his life. 37. People are skeptic. They don't believe. Verse 36, so the Jews said, see how he loved him. Because Jesus wept for Lazarus. But some of them said, could not he, he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man for dying? Siya na nagpagaling sa bulag? Kaya rin ba niyang bumuhay ng patay? Of course, Jesus said in verse 35, After 25, our conclusion is: every one of us, sooner or later, will meet Mr. Death. As we are sinners, we are consigned to meet him. You get that? Dahil tayo mga makasalanan. Nakadistina tayo na image si Mr. Death. The good news is, ang mabuting balita, if we believe, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life, uh, and resurrection and the life. Even we meet, we meet Mr. Death, we will always alive. I'll just repeat that. We are all consigned to meet Mr. Death. But if we believe Jesus, as he, is, as he said, I am the resurrection and the life, even we will meet Mr. Death, we will live. Now, Mr. Death will be not an enemy, but a friend. Sino po ba dito sa atin? Still, death is an enemy. No, you should be friend with death. Okay? Bago sa pandinig, ha? You could not be friend with Mr. Death if you don't put your trust in Christ. If you don't believe in Christ, always you try to be friend with, with, with Mr. Death, he is your enemy. 
For those who believe in Christ, Mr. Death is our friend. Mr. Death is an entrance for eternity in heaven to enjoy Jesus forever. Amen. That is our conclusion. Uh, that is our conclusion in 11.25. Okay? Praise the Lord. So after that, Jesus' disciples are still in nervous breakdown, most probably. They have some sort of feeling left behind, self-pity, because Jesus is keep on saying, I am going. I will be dead. So I am going to betray. I am going away. And he is being betrayed by one of his disciples. The other one is, will deny me. So in the internal circle, what is happening in our brotherhood? It seems there is something wrong. So they are a little bit nervous. But again, Jesus, he started giving peace with his disciples. He is, he, is giving, he is consoling them of what their problem rather than asking their their uh, opinion, their feeling that you should pity on me because I am I'm going to be dead. Someone will betray me, some will deny me. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. I will comfort you. So we'll jump directly in chapter 14. That is the second I am or the three I am's today. Jesus comfort them. Verse 1, He started saying, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. When you are in trouble, someone told you, just tiwala lang, have faith, you can carry it out, just hold on. No, stop hearing that words. That is a lie. Tiwala lang. Kanino? Sarili mo? Hindi ko na nga kaya eh. Sa akin, sarili ko pa magtiwala. Sa asawa mo, eh, lagi nga akong ninanag eh. Wala na nga mabuting sasabihin. Puro pangit. So Jesus is giving a comfort for them. What is comfort? Let not your hearts be troubled. He understands that their heart is, be, is being troubled. He gave the most necessary to remove the trouble is to believe in God. To remember that there is God who sent Jesus. That life, despite of trials, testings, and suffering, tremendous troubles, there is hope. There is someone we can trust in. Someone we can rely on. And Jesus said, trust in God. And trust also in me. Why Jesus is saying this? Because he is the personified image of God. He is the ego in me. You remember in chapter 8 verse 24? He said, Believe in me. I am He. He is saying, I am the incarnate Yahweh. I am the ego in me. You die of your sins if you don't believe in me. So Jesus is saying, reminding them, don't, I know you have a lot of troubles. And Jesus is saying to us now, I know you have a lot of troubles. Now the food is entering, our nose is smelling, and we are a little bit in trouble. 
<laughs> Somehow. So, he consoled them. Jesus giving them peace as they need. Taking care of his ship rather than himself that the hour ahead will be will he be will he will uh, ahead he will be crucified to get out from to trouble of fears they should believe in God and in Christ as the Father and Jesus are one essence as God and he started saying verse 2 in my father's house are many rooms if you were not so you would uh, would I have told you I go to prepare a place for you and now Jesus is saying sabi niyo na huwag kang mag-alala magtiwala sa Diyos magtiwala sa akin sabagat ang ama at ako ay isa wala mo kayong bahay sa lupang ito maraming bahay akong ihanda sa langit It is true that to enter the kingdom, there is a narrow gate. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 14, to enter the kingdom of God, there is a narrow gate. That is true. But Jesus is telling them, giving them assurance, as many, no one can number also the Abraham's children. Abraham's children will enter the kingdom of God as God promised to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22 verse 17. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 14, the Gentiles will enter also the kingdom through Jesus Christ. And in Revelation chapter 7 verse 9, great multitudes of people will be in Christ and no one can number. And Jesus is saying to them, it is not just saying, don't worry, be happy. No, don't worry because there is a place waiting for you. I am prepared for you. I, am pre I, will, I will prepare it for you. And verse 3, our last verse is, I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am you may be also. He said you are scared, you are nervous because we will part ways but take head, don't worry. I will prepare a place for you and I will come again. Then when I come again, I will take you and when I take you there is no separation at all. You will be with me forever in heaven enjoying in the immediate presence of Christ. That is the most profound gospel from Jesus. Christians are not left behind. Jesus will prepare is specifically a house for you you who believe in him verse 4 Jesus is going he said you know the way to where I am going Thomas said to him Lord we do not know where you are going how can we know the way so maybe we are the same with Mr. Thomas or you are the same with Mr. Thomas. And that is good. Thomas asked and Jesus always answered him or answered them. The same. Philip also is asking but Jesus said Jesus said to him I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Praise the Lord. There is a specific answer to this specific question. Had you ever asked why only Jesus is the way? A lot of people asking, 
what kind of God is the God of the Bible? He is so powerful, sovereign, He made only one way? And if that is your question, you should have pity of yourself. But rejoice that there is only one way. Because of God's gracious kindness and love, He gave the only way so that people will not be confused to what way they will go. Kaya ngayon, nagkakagulo na eh. Some other, they are in dating daan. People are claiming that they are in tamang daan. And some are in limang daan. So, we, not, we will not be confused. There is only absolute one way. I am the way Jesus said. He gave a correct, exact, absolute way. There is no other way. Not the good works we can enter heaven. Not of what we are doing. Because what we are doing is just a filter rags in the sight of God. There is only one way, the absolute way. It is Jesus. The truth. If they said we are the truth, no, Jesus is the truth. He is the absolute truth. There is no other religion, sect, denomination that who can bring you to heaven. Only Jesus. And because He is the way, he is the truth and He gives life. He is the life. And who comes to the Father is with life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. And He said to Thomas. Maaring ang iba sa atin ay katulad din ni Thomas. Maybe some of us like Thomas. Or maybe some of our friends are like Thomas, looking for the way, looking how to go to heaven. Don't teach him that just like I see in the video, Mr. Uh, who is that in the bubble gun? Michael V. Michael V. said by all. He said, that's the only way you can help your parents, your loved one is to teach them to do good works. Wow. I want to go in the video and ask him, when, your, when did you last time to do good works? Our problem is we just boosting our good works. Today we do good works. After a little minute, we do a lot of bad works. You, re you realize that? <coughs> You caught yourself doing that, then you have a big problem. That means we need a Savior of Jesus. Verse 7 and 8. Now, chapter 14, verse 7 and 8, it says, If you had known me, so no one come, comes to the Friday, Father except through me. If you have known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Start seeing Mr. Philip. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. So Jesus is saying, if you have known me, you have known the Father. Ano ba ang significance nito, ang pangusap ni Jesus nito? What is the significance? He is claiming again, that he is equal with the Father. Jesus is the invisible exact imprint of the Father. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 3. If you can if we can look that Hebrew. Just try. We have little time. So Hebrew chapter 1 verse verse 3 
You see that? I'll read it for you for us. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his father, power, power, sorry. By the word of his power, after making purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the exact imprint. He is the same essence with the Father. And that's why he's saying Philip. Philip. Philip is not listening. He's reading the Bible. Philip, look at me, Philip. Do you see my eyes? You see the Father. You hear me? You are hearing the Father. You want more evidence? Jesus said, I'll give you. He is the image of the invisible God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. We need to look this verse little time. Just look at your Bible and read it. Read together. I'm reading in ESV version. Verse 19, For in Him, for in Christ, all the fullness of God was placed to dwell. He is the physical Verse 15, much more better. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So Jesus, when he is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he is the most qualified, sinless man, and of course, sinless God. He is the only one can bring people to God. Do you believe this, Jesus said? Verse 10. Uh, verse 9, sorry. Verse 9. Jesus said to, to him, have I, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Now he is again saying, emphasizing that I and the Father are one. We can read that in chapter 10, verse 20, 30, sorry. He's saying that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. You still remember chapter 5? He is being stoned because claiming to be equal with the Father. And Jesus concluded in chapter 8, verse 15, before Abraham I was. So this is very important in our, in our understanding that the centrality of the gospel is Jesus. Jesus is the good news for us sinners. Praise the Lord. In our conclusion, uh, sorry, in verse 11, uh, verse 10 still, the words, so he said, Philip, if you don't believe me, the words that I see you, I do not speak in my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does His works. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on the account of the works themselves. Believe the evidence. What I am doing is authenticate that I am the Messiah, I am the Savior, I am the second person of the Triune God, send to save a sinners like you. To conclude in this verse, 
the surest and secured, secured way to the Father who are in heaven is Jesus. I just uh, make it clear. The surest and secure way to the Father who are in heaven is Jesus. If you are a little bit confused for that so many ways, praise the Lord. There is only one way. God by His grace, He gave only way that people might not be confused. So that is by God's grace. And that way is the absolute truth. Uh, that is the absolute truth because Jesus is the life to come to God. We need to, for us, application for us believers, we need to proclaim this good news. Believe in Christ, the only way, the truth, and the life. So for our loved ones, we need to tell our wife you know I love you very much and Jesus love you as well and he is the way to the abundance of life I could not give you security of life but only Jesus last I am in chapter 15 verse 1 so while Jesus is still here he keep on making sure that his people well, absolutely bound to heaven. Not to anyone, to anywhere else. 15 verse 1. Immediately Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is a vine dresser. Jesus declares this. To who? Of course to his disciples. What is his point declaring this? <clears throat> In Old Testament, Israel is the, is, the, is, is the vine of God. The vine that becomes a rotten vine. He did, uh, Israel did not bring a crop expected to them. But here Jesus is saying, emphasizing that he is the true vine. Verse 1, I am the true vine, and he gave also the hand that the father is the vine dresser, or the father is the gardener, the father who takes care also the branches. Verse 2, uh, uh, Jesus as the true, uh, does, uh, so we, Believers in Christ, as the true branch will bear much fruit. The true, two true branch will bear much fruit in verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. The other branch. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. Now, very simple, Jesus is saying the good news, the reality of life. Mayroong dito mga hindi totoong mga sanga. Mayroong totoong mga sanga. There is a true branch and there is a fake branch. The free, fake branch, what happened? The father will cut them. And verse 6, what will do? Verse 6, what the Father will do for that kind of brands? If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a brand and withers. And the brands are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. These are the type of brands that always in the Bible study, always in the church, assuming to be a brands. But what happened? We could not see any fruit. Or at least any, any flower. Times goes on. He is or they are just a professing Christian. But take note. Verse, the another one is. 
the, the branch that bear fruit. So look at yourself. Look at ourselves. Check your fruit. Because the true branch who, who are in Christ, who are in the vine, always bear fruit. And when it's when there is a, a fruit for this branch, the Father prones. The Father prone to remove the unnecessary things in order that the fruit will para ang bunga ay lalong makita kapakipakinabang and it says that the father will glorify in verse 8 by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples kapatid walang bunga <laughs> so don't look always for the fruit we need always that if we, if they are, no, they are abiding the vine. Now we need to go for that one. Verse 3 and 4, Jesus said, for this uh, branch, that true branch that abides in him, Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now what is abide? Now, let us clear about this. People are immediately being hyped or being they gathered all your strength. Hmm. I need to abide. It's not about effort. Abiding is trusting God or trusting Christ. It is just leaning completely in Christ. Think about the vine and the branches. The branches is just completely relying on the vine. It is not holding in itself and saying, okay, I will just put myself in the vine. No! Don't, again, don't run into your good works, into what you can do. Jesus is saying, you cannot do anything except you don't trust me. The same, katulad ng sanga. May nakita ka na bang sanga na mumunga ng kanyang sarili? Amazing! Maggumising ka, tulutulog ka lang. You are just dreaming. No. The, the, the branch always bear fruit if the branch is in the vine. And please, we need to take note that the fruit of the branch is not that is itself from the branch, that is from the, the vine. We are so frustrated because we are always looking from the fruit. We are always looking for the fruit. We need to look at if we are abiding the vine. We need to check out. Ako nga ba ay nakakabit sa sanga? Ah, ako nga ba ay nakakasangit sa, sa puno? Kaya po marami. We have a lot of struggles in life because we are trying to fix it by ourselves. No, it will not work like that. Palaw pong sanga na mumunga sa sarili niya. Malibang ito ay nakakabit. Well, kung mayroon man, yan ay mga plastic na sanga. And then ay hiponin at ilalagay doon sa apoy. Verse 5, Jesus again repeating this tremendous truth. Look at your Bible. Look at, please. He said again, I am the vine, you are the branches. He is telling specifically to those who believe in Him, to those who abide in Him. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Jesus itself saying, we could not wiser than Jesus. 
Walang mga sanga na pwedeng mamunga na hindi nakakabit sa puno. Whoever abides in me and I in I and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The question is, we are doing a lot of things by ourselves, then we are doing nothing. And we are talking about the nothingness here. The nothingness here is being dead. It is just the, a busy body, no. A branch which is not abide in the vine, they are dead. How hard we try. How hard we pursue. If we don't realize that we need the kind of bind that Jesus is the only true bind who can give the sustenance of our life. We don't know tomorrow. No one knows for the, uh, the next hour, next day. There is a looming tension of war, scarcity, food supply, a lot. Praise the Lord. I am abiding in the vine. I hope also you abide in the vine. Think this one carefully. This is so important in our soul. No life away from Christ. No sustenance. Verse 6, only judgment. Darkness. Hunger. Thirsty. But praise the Lord. Verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask wherever you wish. And it will be, and it will be done for you. Immediately a lot of people shouting and saying, Ah, I will ask the Lord whatever I ask. He will give it to me. Yes, Jesus said. But we need to look at the, the verse itself carefully again. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you trust completely in the will of Christ and completely rely in his words, Ask whatever you wish. Because when we are in the words of Christ, we always ask good for us. We will not ask, Lord, please give me an airplane. Because our mind is already educated. We cannot ask airplane when, when, when we don't have any pilot and even no runway. So we always ask, what is satisfied best for us. That's why we are the so-called people content. We are expert of being content of what we have, of whom we have, and that is we have Jesus. Verse 8, By this my Father is glorified when you bear much fruit, so you prove to be my disciples. That is the evidence of we are in Christ. And further, in the next verses, there is a love relationship between Jesus, the vine, and branches, his sheep, or his people. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. If we say we love Jesus, the measurement of our love to Jesus is how we obey him. Ang sukatan ng ating pag kay Kristo ay kung paano natin siyang sinusunod. Kaya kung sinasabi mo sa akin, ako masunodin, ako'y mapagmahal kay Jesus, I'm just waiting to look at how you obey him. We can see that in 1421. Just read it by yourself. 
then we'll end up with these verses as we read. These things I have spoken to you that joy, that my joy may be in you and that joy may be full. The completeness of joy is be in Christ. There is no other joy is where in the presence of our Lord. If, the, if Jesus is the giver of life, He can give us tremendous joy even in the midst of our trials. And of course, He will sustain us. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, that my God will supply all our needs. Christians are not left behind. We are always sustained because we are in the brand, we are in the vine. This is my commandment, verse 12, that you love one another as I love you. We love because He first loved us. We love our neighbors because Jesus loved us. Our neighbors is unloving. We are unloving too. But Jesus loves us. Greater love has no one than this that some someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You choose me, but I choose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should abide. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will be loved. You will love one another. The true branch is bear fruit. The number one fruit is love. Conclusion, only in Jesus we have life and the abundance of it. He is the life and the sustenance of our, of our life. Abide in Him and His words. I always mean this. We should have the life of complete surrender to His will will and we have the life complete reliance to his words as we complete the study the sermon about the I am of Jesus we can rely on him as he always said you will never and that never is anchored in his essence the Holy God. Jesus promised according to His holiness. We can read that in Psalms chapter 89. If I can remember it correctly, verse 25, I think, or somewhere there. I promise, He promised not only to David, but He promised to His holiness. My question to us is, do you believe Jesus? Do you give yourself to Jesus? You answer that question thinking that Jesus is just sitting beside you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving your word. Thank you for your grace. The good news is, Jesus is the living word, the incarnate word. He teaches us and he claims to be equal with you and we believe him. Lord, our life is nothing. There is no life away from the life of you, Jesus. You are the life and you are our life. We believe in you. Convict our hearts. Help us that we realize you are sinners worthy to be punished. There is the impending wrath of the Holy God 
sa mga makasalanan tulad namin. But Lord, thank you for your good news. Thank you for your life. That you give it as a ransom for us. And whoever believes in you, Jesus, never will never thirst, never lost, never walk in darkness. There is a sustenance of life because you are the vine. Even though we we will die physically, we will be live spiritually. When we will meet Mr. Death today, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, present in, uh, present in the body, away in the body is present in the Lord. Lord, thank you that even for us Christians, when we lift away from this world, Immediately we will be in your immediate presence. And during the resurrection time, you will resurrect our earthly body from the perishable into imperishable. Thank you, Lord. This is all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.